Hello, I'm Jay, Premiere editor since about 25 years, which is quite a long time. So I've seen a lot of versions of Premiere. And 25 is sort of the magic number because I've just recently upgraded to Premiere 2025 or Premiere Pro 2025. And the performance on my system is absolutely awful. And I said as much on Twitter uh, after a discussion that I got involved in uh, with some people on Reddit who were asking, is the performance of 2025 really that bad? Or is it just my system? And I said, no, absolutely. Absolutely, it's my system as well. And shortly after, decided I'm going to downgrade to Premiere 2023 because it performs so much better. So I said that on Twitter, and Adobe Care were quite nice in reaching out. Nishu, thank you so much for, for dropping me a line. And they were saying, would it be possible for you to make a video so that we can see what it is that's so bad about it? And I thought, you know what, this is great. I do have some time actually right now. So let's get right into it. Before I show you 2025, let me show you the performance on 23, which is the current version that I went back to, because that's the only way I can work really. Uh, 24 was already starting to be pretty bad, but I could just about tolerate it. But it was already a performance uh, penalty over 23 on my system. And 25 just takes a cake, so it's not something that I want to work with anymore. Uh, before we get into that, though, quick demo of my system specs here, just because you know you, you might probably say, oh, Jay, it's just a, you're working on an old system. You got to chuck that away. You got to, got to spend 10 grand on a new workstation. No, no, it's probably still OK. It's a dual Intel Xeon Platinum. 8160 CPU that I'm working with. I'm working with 256 gigabytes of system RAM. I'm using an RTX 4080 Super graphics card, and I'm editing off a RAID that is parts actually made up of four M2 drives, which are two 990 Pros and two 980 Pros. So it's it's fast. It's really, really fast. And I was always really happy with Premiere until literally 2023. So let me go and make a new project here. This dialogue, by the way, terrible. I really don't like that. And I'm going to call that what uh, Adobe Demo 2023. And I think, have I got one of those already? No. Perfect. So this is 2023, and I just wanted to show you how this performs, and then we're going to go to 25. I'm going to use some footage that I've just recorded here. This was recorded on a Mac. This is, of course, PC, and this is nothing special. It's a 2K footage, about 600 megabytes in size, and this is me explaining, talking through an Unreal Engine project. And usually I have to cut these things down so that, you know, take some pauses out. So like this, for example, one of the things that I always do is I switch over to the C tool, to the cut tool, also notice V to C that switches immediately if I do that and I make a cut here and then I go to the end of that I'm going to make another cut here and then I'll go switch back to the V tool right click and then go to speed duration and I'll go and speed this up by let's say 500% click return and then you know that's what happens I'm going to go and tidy this up with ripple edit that's it and you can see how relatively smooth that is working on my system and I'll do the, the same thing here so C to the and see again, switch to the V tool, right click speed duration and make, make that 300%. And then I'll go and tidy this up with a ripple delete. And you know, that's that's what I do. Also, the other thing that uh, us editors do, of course, we, we scrub the footage and notice how at half resolution, even at full resolution, this is super fast and not laggy at all. I can just move my playhead and everything is fine. Uh, something we do quite often, we press L to play this back in, in, uh, in real time or press the space bar to do that. And the footage starts playing back immediately as you can see here l once l twice l three times for you know four times playback sometimes even faster than that and you can see the um, the graphical user interface works fine and usually if i play it back at uh, four times there's this it's absolutely fluid here and it's i have no problems with that so i do that and then my edit is finished the end really let me show you what happens if i do this on 2025 i'm going to go and close this project down and go minimize that. This is 2025 here, just to show you this is 25.1 build 73. And I'm gonna go and do the exact same thing here with a new project. So Adobe Demo 2025. Oh, I should have clicked skip import mode because that's quite <laughs> that's quite nice. I can also skip it here. So it's, it's totally fine. I'm gonna use the exact same footage and show you what happens here. So right click to import use the same preview footage here. And the first thing that sort of strikes me is that Premiere sort of takes a little bit longer for this to appear 
on a timeline here for, for audio to appear on the timeline. Bottom right, I don't have that bar anymore that shows me how far the audio is rendered because only at that point I do see a waveform here. And I, there, there we go, it's finally here. But you know, it's fine. So as I said, this isn't something that's brand new with 2025. It's just something that it's been made worse and it's something that already crept in and with uh, Premiere 2024. So first of all, playback here, I can go and move the playhead. It's, the playback is almost as fast, but when I start, there's a bit of a lag and I don't really know why that is. It's annoying, but it's of course something that I could live with. Uh, what I cannot live with, however, is if I press L once, L twice, and then L three times, you can see that the uh, playhead bar isn't actually moving it sort of waits and then it skips and it's got like major issues because it's all like super unoptimized or whatever happens under the hood this wasn't what 2023 was like this this thing isn't moving and i really need to see how that relates on the uh, timeline here to what footage that relates so this is this is already number one and i think that's just the beginning of the issues so if i go back to something like this and do the exact same thing i'm going to go switch over to the cut tool and 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 see that switching there. I don't see the cursor switching. I'm going to count and see eventually this thing is going to eventually, hello, move its thing into cut mode. Perfect. So that takes a while sometimes. It didn't this time, but hey, one of those things. So cut here. I'm switching. I'm already switched back to the to the move tool. And there it hasn't actually, it wasn't capable of reacting to that. So once again, I'm in cut, I'm cutting here. I'm switching back to the V tool, which is what I need. And it's just not reacting. And now like two, three seconds later, it's popping into play. So that isn't good. I'm gonna go to speed duration, speed that up by 500%. I'm counting one, two, three, four, five it still hasn't done it six there we go oh wow that's just insane same with the ripple edit i right click i say ripple edit and i'm counting one oh there we go that's that's nice so often it it just gets it like five six seconds delay and i really can't work like that this is just you know if we have to do a lot of edits this is not something you want to work with look at that i've already switched the tool it's not letting me it's not letting me actually do that. So I'm on cut, I'm switching back to the V tool and it's just not letting me do this thing until now. So it's like two, three second delay here. I don't know what's going on, but it's terrible. So let's go and speed this up by 300% and we're waiting again. What, what are we waiting for? This is not my system. This is your software and you gotta fix it. This is, this is awful. And this is exactly the sort of performance problematic issues that we all are talking about. Um, yeah, this is like, I just pressed tab like three seconds ago and then eventually the thing is going, you know, into its thing. So this this isn't this is the problem really. To alleviate, if you're asking, how do you deal with all the existing projects that uh, that you need to downgrade? How do you deal with that? Well, I use this wonderful tool here from the friendly people from Elements, which is the Premiere Pro downgrader. That's on downgrader.elements.tv. I'm going to leave a link to this in the description. All you do is you select your project file that you have on a higher version, and then you download it immediately afterwards that this thing basically strips out the version number, and then you can import it into pretty much any recent version of Premiere. It will then tell you you need to upgrade it to the current version and then you can use it so i can use all my 25 projects on 23. so this is this is what we have to go through because <laughs> adobe, adobe software isn't isn't up to scratch right now so i appreciate you guys have reached out and uh, i appreciate if you guys were to fix it but for now i'm staying on 23 because that works without issues on my system with a performance that i really need to do my job so that i can pay you guys basically now one thing that i am slightly concerned about is the fact that the current creative cloud app doesn't let me download anything older than 23 and that sort of gets my alarm bells ringing because i would imagine by the time 26 comes out you guys gonna ditch the fact that we can even download 23 from the creative cloud so i'm i'm begging you please don't do that we haven't really asked for many of the features that you guys have been putting in in recent versions we really haven't asked for it didn't want to use them anyway. Glad that they're available, but really don't force them upon us. Super, super nice if we had the choice. A bit like the, the new layout here that got sort of forced down our throats in, in 2025. I think that was uh, under the preferences here. There is appearance. That's where you can sort of uh, change that. Also, how long does this dialogue need to take? It's crazy. What was on appearance was under, under labels. Here, there we go, labels default and then there's classic so default 
default is sort of the new vibrant one that where you need sunglasses and classic is the one that's more muted like you know 90 style sort of the thing that i prefer and you've got a couple of others just in case you were wondering how to how to get rid of it yeah we can't change it so it's one of those things oh one thing before i forget i have not got any plugins running so there's no plugins at all uh, once again dual xeon 8160 cpu with 256 gigabytes of ram with an RTX 4080 Super. Those are my system specs. I hope this helps. If you guys from Adobe need any other logs or whatnot from me, please reach out. I'm happy to provide it. Anything to get your software more performant again. And please don't forget about legacy users, i.e. those who you know have hardware from literally six months ago. Oh, one other tidbit of information that I didn't want to forget. I'm not recording this on the same PC that I'm demonstrating with. It's a different machine. So I'm just capturing the HDMI my out so it has nothing to do with the demo that i've performed also i'm using an apple m2 ultra studio for editing as well which performs better of course but i still have found that it doesn't perform as snappy and as fast as the 2023 version so that is all i have for today thank you so much for watching thank you anyone who found this lightly interesting and if you do have any questions then please let me know in the comments for now i'll see you next time Bye bye